I mean, and that is how you do it, folks. Your next dance coming up shortly. All right. <laughs> well, I mean, it, it doesn't get old. It doesn't get old. You're sounding as good as ever. You're looking great. What's the secret, Tony? Uh, never getting old. Never getting old. No. And I've stopped doing it. OK, well, that, that's good. We've got uh, that. That's... I've uh, yeah, I've, and I've dyed my... Have you noticed I've dyed my hair grey? <laughs> yes. That's why they didn't recognise me. I've done that too, do you uh, think? Uh, it's not working just as well for me. <laughs> it's not working just as well for me. <laughs> Keep going. Uh, what's it like being out on the road again? I mean, with all the hits, Amarillo, Marie, Avenue and Alleyways, what's the, what's the audience has been like? Oh, fantastic. I mean, it's been absolutely brilliant. I, I, I thought I'd been retired by now, but um, uh, when you've got seven, seven grandkids and three kids and, and a wife, Oh, my current wife's here, by the way, tonight. She's... They, yeah. And I'm sure... Yeah. I, and I, and I I'm, sure, and I'm sure she'll thank you for that, Tony. I keep... I, I, forget, I forget. She said, don't keep seeing my current wife. We've been married 56 years, so... <laughs> there you go. That's why I keep on working. So, so you, you've been you've been married fifty six years. Yeah. I mean, Amarillo, a song over fifty years old. Like, yeah, the sweet spot in music is when a massive song and a massive performer come together. What was the story behind that? Because it was a Neil Sedaka song, wasn't it? It was. Yeah, my my at the time, nineteen seventy one. It was, um, and my uh, my manager at the time uh, went over to uh, to New York, and he went to see Neil Sedaka. Um, in, in his uh, apartment, and he, he said, uh, "I've got a singer in, in, in the UK, and he's doing really well. He's you know really doing well." He says, "I'm looking for songs. Have you got any songs that would suit?" He played him a demo of mine, and he said, uh, "Have you got a, any songs that would suit him?" And so Sadaka sat at the piano, and he, he played about six songs, and my, my manager said, um, "The ballad." He says, "The ballad you played." He says. That's great. He says, I love that one, but we'll, I'll definitely have that one. He says, and the last one you did, he says, that is definitely, I want that one. And Siddharth, this is true. Siddharth says, well, it's not finished. So my manager says, what do you mean it's not finished? He says, that part where I sing sha la 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 la, we haven't got the lyrics for it yet. We're still working on the lyrics. My, my man, I, I can't wait. Uh, he swore, my manager, my manager, swore. I mean, you're in Dublin on a Friday night, you could do a lot worse. Oh, yeah. So... <laughs> so that was it. Uh, and, and he came back from New York and, and uh, he got the two songs, which was uh, Solitaire, which uh, I, 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 I recorded Solitaire and uh, Amarillo on the same session, and they went on my first album. So that was 1971. And the rest is history. Absolutely. Yeah. And the rest is history. So that song got you the freedom of Amarillo. Yeah. You've also got the freedom of Kong, County Mayo. Kong, yeah. yeah. Anyway, there we go. Yeah. Mayor for Sam. Mayor for Sam. <laughs> so. I'm, yes, I'm, I'm out there in, I think it's January or February, uh, to, I'm doing my, my, my fingerprints, my prints in Kong. Uh, so I'm really, I've been there once before. It's great, great place. So there's a, there's a family connection to Mayo, is that right? Is May, that why well, you've got my, the, the... My, yeah, my, 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 grandfather, my grandfather was from uh, Claire Morris. Uh, in County Mayo, and um, I think it was about 1918, because at that time Ireland was going through a hell of a time. You know, people were leaving, coming to England or going to America. Young blokes who couldn't couldn't work. You know, uh, my grandfather uh, he, he came over to South Yorkshire, and um, he actually he he then met, believe it or not, he met a, a lady because my my grandfather played the squeeze box, um, and. I, in, in, in Cayley bands. And I, I, I've actually got, from, it's a 1918, a squeeze box in my lounge. Pride of place. Nobody can go near it. I won't let anybody touch it. Because, because your name was originally Fitzgerald? Yes, but that's my real name, Fitzgerald, yeah. My daddy's, my daddy, there you go. My daddy was Paddy, Paddy Fitzgerald. Paddy Fitzgerald. Patrick, like you. And so, so yeah. he, you changed the name to Christie. Yeah. Uh, but you didn't forget the Irish roots. You've got an Irish album as well. Uh, I, yes, and I'm working on the second one, uh, part two. I'm starting that, that next week. So, yeah, it's, it's there. It's, it's in my blood, you know. I was surrounded, I was surrounded as, as a kid. Uh, uh, my dad used to play the piano, Patrick, my dad, Paddy, Fitzgerald, my dad. Uh, and he was, uh, he was an accountant with a coal board in, in South Yorkshire. 
And, but he played the piano as well. And of course, by then, my grandfather was from Clare Morris. He had uh, come over to South Yorkshire and he met, uh, he was in a Cayley band playing the squeeze box. And he met uh, my grandma, who was from Galway, uh, uh, had come over to England from Galway. And she was a, a, a fiddle player. So they got married and they had my dad, Paddy. And uh, every so often they used to come over when I was about six, seven or eight to, my, to our house. And my dad played the piano and he used to stand me on a, on a stool uh, and I'd sing the songs at the time, it was the late 40s, early 50s. And uh, my grandparents were there and they used to give, get, give me a sixpence. And that's how you got your start? I thought, I'm going to make a living. Sixpence in those, you're talking about early 50s. And I thought, singing a few songs, that's, that's my, that's my, that was it. That's how you do it? Yeah. I mean, you've never been busier. You're, you're on tour, you've got the yeah. album coming out earlier this year. Yeah. You uh, spoke about being diagnosed with dementia. That's right, yeah. Um, which you said was important for you to talk about. Yeah. And yeah. what was the reaction from your fans to that news? Well, I mean, the thing was, I, 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 it was two years ago, um, and my, my wife, current wife, <laughs> <laughs> keeps her on her feet. Um, she noted, because I've, I've been a crossword fanatic for all my life. I, I, I was, a, you know, a, doing crosswords, I couldn't, and suddenly I'm starting having problems. Uh, and I thought, there's something not quite right. So I said to my wife, what's happening? I keep, forget keep forgetting things. And I was good at this game, doing quizzes, you know, crosswords. She said, let's go and see a doctor, which we did. And they did a, 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 an x-ray and question, all that kind of thing. And uh, she suddenly said, well, that's it. You, you've got to dement the, the beginnings of dementia. Um, and they put me on these very strong tablets which has kept it, it's not cured it, it's kept it down. No, no but you, you're still able to perform, you're still able, still oh, able to do your stuff, and you know, you've said that, that music is really medicine well, for you. The doctor said, uh, actually, you're, in, you're very lucky because you're in the music business, and music is one of the things that, that anybody with dementia, it's good for them. If they play music, it holds it back. So I've been stopped, I've been stopped, uh, Patrick, I've been stopped in, in the supermarkets and on the streets by so many people since I came out, because I came out, said it live on, this, uh, do you know Steph? Steph yeah, yeah, Steph, Steph on Channel 4, packed, yeah. Packed lunch, yeah. On her show, I came out live and said it. I thought, oh, to hell with it. I'm not ashamed of it. You know, it's... I, but, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> not really. Because, but it really, it's just... There's nothing to be ashamed of. It's like, to me, it was like, I've got flu. It, it's something, you know, that, that people live with. It's something that people survive with. Yeah. It's something that someone like you is thriving with. Yeah. And, uh, and we can't thank you enough for still staying on the road, yeah. still doing the live dates, still recording the music That's right. and coming to see us tonight. Yeah, I mean, I've just made, I've, I've just got back from a couple of weeks ago from Nashville where I made, uh, I had three weeks there and I made two brand new albums with, with, in Blackbird Studios, which is the, probably the best in the world, with uh, all American musicians, uh, absolutely, and I, I, I staggered. It's the best, al the best albums I've ever made. And that is coming our way in, it's, in it's January. Coming out in, in January or early February, yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. Tony, come back and see us anytime. We're delighted to see you on the show. Give it up one more time for Tony Christie. Thank you. Thank you. Tony's new album, We Still Shine, is released in January and you can catch him live in the Cork Opera House on January the 25th next, the Helix in Dublin on January the 26th and he's finishing in the Ulster Hall on January the 27th. All details at TonyChristie.com.